Is this true? After the release of the Mate 60 series by Huawei, the company's mobile business is continuing to improve and has become the fastest-growing smartphone vendor in the Chinese market. Huawei's momentum is expected to continue, with shipments projected to reach 70 million units in 2024. Some foreign media even mentioned in their analysis reports that Huawei's shipment target for next year has been raised to 100 million units. Although the Mate 60 series has been on sale for three months, it is still difficult to find the phones on the official website and e-commerce platforms. Booking in advance is required. The Mate X5 foldable screen phone is completely out of stock, and those who want to buy it can only resort to scalpers with price markups. The reason why Huawei smartphones are making a comeback is undoubtedly due to the Kirin 9000's chip, which is 100% domestically made and has completely separated from US technology in terms of architecture design and manufacturing process. Huawei's success breakthrough can be seen as rendering the long-standing US sanctions completely ineffective, as the company has broken through the small courtyard high walls built by the West. This has made countless Chinese people feel immensely proud, so Huawei's resurgence in the smartphone market is well deserved. Now, there is another piece of good news about Huawei. A blogger has leaked information that there is not only one version of the Kirin 9000's chip, and a new platform with varying performance levels from the same lineage is coming soon. From the leaked information, the specifications of the new Kirin 9000's chip is said to be 1 by 2.49 GHz plus 3 by 2.15 GHz plus 4 by 1.53 GHz. The CPU architecture is the same as the Kirin 9000s, with the main difference being a slight decrease in the frequency of the large core by 0.13 GHz. The GPU remains the in-house developed Mali G910. Clearly, this new version of the Kirin 9000s chip is a downgraded version of the Kirin 9000s, with slightly lower performance. However, the overall user experience is not expected to be significantly affected. This chip will likely be used primarily in Huawei's new tablets and mid-range devices. There are also rumors that Huawei will release the Nova 12 series in December, which will be equipped with the new version of the Kirin 9000's chip. If this information is true, it means that Qualcomm's good days are coming to an end. Prior to this, Huawei still maintained a product line using Qualcomm chips, including the recently released Huawei Nova 11 SE, which is equipped with the Snapdragon 680 chip. The upcoming Nova 12 series is indeed going to be powered by the new version of the Kirin 9000's chip. It indicates that Huawei's mid-range and low-end models will gradually switch to the new Kirin platform, and Qualcomm will completely lose Huawei as a major customer. Therefore, for Qualcomm, the advantages brought by the US sanctions on Huawei will soon be lost. Qualcomm's good days are also coming to an end, as not only Huawei is turning away from Qualcomm, but other domestic manufacturers are also intentionally distancing themselves from Qualcomm. For example, at the launch event of the Xiaomi 14 series, although the new devices initially featured the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, unlike previous years, the introduction of the Snapdragon chip was only briefly mentioned during the event. Additionally, Xiaomi's sub-brand Redmi's new K70 series will also adopt the latest flagship chip from MediaTek, implying that MediaTek is gradually encroaching on Qualcomm's position in the mid-to-high-end market, apart from Xiaomi, other domestic manufacturers also have similar situations. For example, the latest Oppo Reno 11 is equipped with the MediaTek Dimensity 8200, and the new flagship Vivo X100 is equipped with the Dimensity 9300. In short, domestic manufacturers are all distancing themselves from Qualcomm, and they no longer consider Qualcomm as the main selling point of their products, mainly due to the US sanctions on Huawei and other Chinese companies in recent years which has sounded the alarm for domestic manufacturers. As Huawei, Xiaomi, and other companies continue to distance themselves from Qualcomm, Qualcomm will undoubtedly face increasing difficulties in the future. What's more important is that Huawei has already broken through the chip blockade, 
which means that the domestic chip industry in China is accelerating its rise. The future will definitely be better. Only by completely breaking the U.S.'s technical sanctions can Chinese technology companies achieve sustainable development. The U.S. has been trying to confine China's manufacturing to the low-end sector, but this plan will eventually fail. Now is the decisive moment for China to break through the blockade. As long as domestic technology companies work together and we support them with all our efforts, there will be a day when the blockade is completely broken. By that time, the U.S.'s sanctions and blockade will be completely ineffective, and Chinese technology will achieve its greatest victory. Yes, it's really happening. Huawei is making a big move. The new version of the Kirin 9000S is here, in-house processor replacing Qualcomm. The latest information shows that there is more than one version of the Kirin 9000S and a new platform with different performance levels called Kirin 9000S 5G is coming. In terms of specifications, it features 1 by 2.49 gigahertz plus 3 by 2.15 gigahertz plus 4 by 1.53 gigahertz with the same CPU architecture as the Kirin 9000S. The frequency of the large core is reduced by 0.13 GHz, and the GPU remains the in-house developed Mali G910. It is expected to be used in Huawei's new tablets and mid-range devices. Point one. How is the performance of the new Kirin 9000S? In simple terms, the new Kirin 9000S is a slightly downgraded version. It is expected to have a slight decrease in performance compared to the original Kirin 9000S. Recently, a device with the model number Huawei XYAO W00 appeared on the Geekbench benchmark platform, and it is equipped with the new Kirin 9000S. The specific benchmark scores show that the new Kirin 9000S scored 1244 in single core performance and 3793 in multi core performance. Compared to the original Kirin 9000S, which scored 1243 in single core and 4111 in multi core, there is a slight decrease in performance. Point two. What is the significance of the new Kirin 9000S? In fact, as early as August, there were reports that the Kirin 9000S would have different versions with different performance levels, based on different manufacturing processes, to be used in other devices. On the one hand, this helps differentiate the positioning of different products, not all products can use the same CPU. On the other hand, it also increases the production capacity of their in-house processors to meet the demand for Huawei's terminal devices. The emergence of the new Kirin 9000S marks the official replacement of Qualcomm by Huawei's in-house processors. Starting from 2024, Huawei's new models will fully adopt their self-designed Kirin processors, and Qualcomm will completely lose Huawei's orders. According to previous leaks, Huawei is clearing the inventory of older models in preparation for the transition to the new product line. It is expected that towards the end of this year and the beginning of next year, Huawei will launch a flood of new products. Currently, the Huawei Mate 60 series, Mate X5, and Huawei Mate Pad Pro 13. 2-inch are already equipped with the Kirin 9000S processor, everything goes as planned, the upcoming Nova series, Enjoy series, and other mid-range and low-end models will gradually transition to the new Kirin processors, and a recent report by the ELEC, due to the strong demand for the Mate 60 series, Huawei has set a smartphone shipment target of 100 million units for next year, which is 40% higher than previous predictions by institutions. This also means that there will be a significant demand for the Kirin chips from Huawei next year. Point three. Huawei's Kirin 9000S impresses foreign media, according to the latest data report released by Tech Insights. Huawei's global smartphone shipments achieved a year-on-year -year growth of 44% in the third quarter of 2023. The report attributes this largely to its resilience in the Chinese market. With the promotion of the Mate 60 Pro model, Huawei achieved a 50% annual growth rate in China. 
Huawei's comeback in 5G with its self-sufficient chipsets is a milestone and breakthrough for the Chinese semiconductor industry, said Tech Insights. I in fact, as early as September this year, Tech Insights gave the following evaluation when releasing the teardown report of the Mate 60 Pro, this is indeed an impressive level of quality that we did not expect, and it is definitely world-class. So, we congratulate China for being able to produce such a product. This means that China has very strong capabilities and is continuing to develop its technology. Dan Hutchison believes that the chips used in the Huawei Mate 60 Pro are very advanced. Although they may not be as advanced as the most cutting-edge chips, the gap is within the range of 2 to 2.5 process nodes. Lu Tingjie, a professor at Beijing University of Posts and Telecommunications and executive vice chairman of the China Information Economics Society, stated that a gap of 2 to 2.5 process nodes means that we are still around 3 to 5 years behind the advanced 5G chips in terms of Western countries' technological progress. However, China often surpasses with its own speed, which is different from the speed of progress in Western countries. What do you think? That's all for today's video. See you in the next episode. Episode